You're listening to Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official podcast of Lingerie Fighting Championships. And now, here's your host, Michael Lutkin! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the official LFC Lingerie Fighting Championships podcast, Beauty, Strength, and Dominance. My name is Mike Larkin, and joining me tonight, she is the host of LFC 39 Goddess Among Us, live from Secrets Hideaway Resort and Spa in Kissimmee, Florida. Oh my goodness, Misha Montana, welcome to LFC, and we cannot wait to see you on February 24th. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited about hosting this event. Like, I cannot wait. It's going to be such a great time. I love the message too and like how it's so empowering for women and just embracing that strong feminine energy and I, I'm so excited to be a part of it. So thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled. You are so welcome. I got to say a lot of fans are much very excited for the event in Kissimmee, Florida, okay. and also to see you hosting the event. And I got to say, first and foremost, this is your introduction to LFC. And I got to say, when it comes to lingerie fighting championships, it's about a little bit of MMA, a little bit of wrestling, and a little bit of clothing. And what a great way to start off 2024 with a great event at uh, Secrets. I mean, what a great resort, great spot. It's going to be exciting. I absolutely agree. No better way to start the new year than this. I'm I'm so excited about this. We're going to kick it off the right way. Um, Secrets is amazing. I have been visiting Secrets for a couple of years now, and it's like it's the coolest place like in the country. Like we go to all these different places, and of every place I've ever been, I'm like, this is just like it's so much fun. The atmosphere, the people, the vibe is like, and people are always kind of a little off put by it at first sometimes, but it's just, it's such a good open time and everybody is like so embracing and positive and loving and it, it's really an amazing time and like, and you have just a great, great time. So if you want to party and have fun and like look at beautiful women, like no better place, like it's an awesome time. Agreed. And as you can see on the screen here, folks, Misha Montana. There it is. Oh, Yes. First of all, beautiful photo to capture the internal and external beauty in your overall foundation with Misha Montana. And if folks, if you want to see, you're very welcome. If you want to see some of the great talents that we get to see of lingerie fighting championships here, as I pull up our next screen here, here we go. Oh, yay. Oh, my goodness. Drum roll. There we are. We have Goddess Among Us right here on this version of the poster because there's so many posters out there. We have front and center Sheena the Hungarian Hurricane Bathory. We have Mrs. Rob Van Dam, Katie the Bombshell Forbes. We have Tracy Nix out of Shine Wrestling and many of the independents in the Florida area who's also been on AEW All Elite Wrestling. We got Paris Love in the background. We got the Queen Gia Love. And we also got Bella Madison, the Rebel Princess herself. Such amazing talents that are going to be on this card. And I got to say, from the wrestling side of things and what I love about LFC, and I think you can agree with me here, Miss Misha Montana, who doesn't love the sex appeal, the overall embodiment, like you mentioned, of empowerment, but women that can take names and kick butt and look good at the same time, that is a winning combination. I'll tell you what, I've been like, when the poster first came out, I was like, I can't stop staring at it because I'm just like, not only do you have just like this badass group of women, but they're like stunningly gorgeous and perfect bodies. And the whole thing is just like, it's something I couldn't even make more perfect if you tried. Um, and I love it. There's so many talented women, like different backgrounds and and they're all successful in their own right and just gorgeous and just ready to kick ass. And it's going to be amazing. I think what I've always embodied, and this has been my tenure with LFC with Lingerie Fighting Championships, I've always equated to, and a lot of fans can also agree with me on this, when you had the LFL back in the day with the Lingerie Football League, where it was just women on the gridiron just kicking ass and taking names on the football field. And I mean, one of the amazing alumni from the LFL would go on to the WWE, Miss Danielle Monet, the former Summer Rae in World Wrestling Entertainment. Like, there's so many great backgrounds. And also, if you could have the sex appeal and the drive like we saw on MTV2 back in the day with football... I think you can yeah. have so many different messages with that embodiment of not just empowering with football, but who doesn't love grace, art, elegance, and sexiness within a sport? 100%. Well, and, you know, I think people 
kind of have the wrong idea a lot of times too about, you know, it's like lingerie, they think it's exploiting and, you know, all these different things that are negative about it, but it's like, it's such a, an awesome like experience and it is empowering. And these women are like, yeah, they're gorgeous. They should be showing off their beautiful bodies that they've worked hard to have. And then on top of it, they're so talented. They're so athletic. They're strong. They're sexy. They're feminine. They're embracing it. And like, and they can kick your ass. So it's the whole combination is just, it's such a beautiful, like poetic display. I, I love every second of it. I've always said this. I remember back in elementary school when you had a lot of books about women's athletes. You look at Mia Hamm in the soccer realm. You look at Lisa yes. from the WNBA side of things. We've seen this for years, but I think especially when it comes to professional wrestling, professional MMA, and especially lingerie fighting championship, I think putting it out the forefront, like you mentioned, to some it can be off-putting, some say exploitation. The way I see it, entertainment. The way I see I it, agree. emotions, eliciting reaction. Everything that we do, if you really equate it to life in itself, Miss Montana, it's an art form. Everything. I agree. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I mean, life is art, right? Yeah. I truly believe that every part of life is is definitely art. So, and this is art. It's art in motion, and it's and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And we should be embracing it more too. So, I love it, and I love being a part of it too. I just, I love the industries. I love seeing like powerful women just you know, being themselves and being successful and like giving that art to other people. Like it's a wonderful gift that they're giving everybody. So it's awesome. I love it. And I think with the sport, what we do, I mean, we've seen women of all different facets of life, whether it be professional yeah. wrestlers, whether it be adult entertainments, finished models. I look at it from a stance too as well. If you do it like any sport, I mean, there's conditioning, there's cardio, yeah. there's athleticism, there's bodybuilding, there's everything that goes into it that goes into you applying your craft. I think having that little flavor to it, and yes, I'm using the flavor like flavor. I love it, flavor. You have to have flavor with everything that you do. It may be out of the norm to some, but I've always said this when it comes also to adult entertainment, because I think we've become more open minded, especially in the year 2024. Everything's kind of more of the norm when you have OnlyFans, many vids, and many distributions of content to accumulate money and you look at it as a business. That's really everything that you do from an endeavor. You have to look at things like a business. You really do. Well, and that's what I think people don't understand too about you know, the adult industry or any, you know, derivative is that you have to look at it and approach it as a business because it is a business. People think it's like a free for all and, you know, the wild, wild west and there aren't like rules and regulations and, and you can just get away with doing whatever you want. And somehow you're just going to accumulate tons of money and, and fame and power and success. And it's, it, not that simple. Um, the adult industry is one of the most like competitive, especially nowadays because of the saturation and like, but it is normalizing in the other hand too, where I hope we're moving more towards a progressive uh, state of mind as a society where we're embracing and being more tolerant of sex workers and of the adult entertainment industry. Um, you know, it, it, you have to approach it in kind of a cautious way though too, because people are normalizing it so much that they forget that there are, you know, consequences and difficulties that come with this life and the lifestyle and embracing it as much as we are changing and we are moving forward and making huge progress like across the board. There are still a lot of harsh realities that exist because society is so judgmental and it is still taboo. And um, there are those same things, the consequences that apply. But we are moving in such a positive direction. And by pushing things like this and like, you know, normalizing it and being tolerant and inclusive and throwing all these things out into the forefront, people are going to digest it more easily the more that they see it and the more normal it becomes. And it, and it should be. We're all creatures of sex. We're all products of sex. We all have sex, you know. Um, our life is due to sex. So it's like, why do we shame it so much all the time? It's like, so being at the forefront of the movement of this new age sexual revolution, have you, um, is really an exciting time to, to be able to be a part of some of these experiences because I, I really feel that as a society, we're moving into, into that direction where we will at some point finally be able to destigmatize you know, the adult industry and sex work in general. 
to quote George Michael back in 1987, sex is natural, sex is good, not everybody does it, but everybody should, I want your sex. One of the things that really comes into fruition into the forefront, like Miss Montana said here, I always equate it to the two S's, safe and spectacular. You apply your craft safely and in spectacular fashion. How that can equate to the adult entertainment industry, you look at testing and everything that goes into yeah. it. There's a lot of different things behind the scenes that also transpires and transmortifies onto the camera side of things. But I think if you're applying your craft safely and you're doing a spectacular fashion, you cannot go wrong. But also at the end of the day, you're golden within yourself and your all around foundation. I agree with that 100%. That's beautifully spoken. And that's what people don't understand too is, you know, because of that such a harsh stigma and there's all these opponents of, of the adult industry, you know, a lot of it is religious, you know, faith-based criticisms and, you know, implying their own moral superiority onto other people, um, that they don't realize that the regulations in adult are so rigid and it, it's, those procedures are put in place to protect you know, the performers and people think that we're just running around like we're just like the dirtiest, nastiest people in the world that just have sex with everybody and that we're disease ridden. Like some of the, the most common, like mud slinging comments that you get, it's just always the typical, like the same boring regurgitation. It's like, oh, you're just like a diseased whore and you guys just run around spreading STDs. It's like, we get tested more than any person I've ever met in my life. Like, I don't know anyone who doesn't work in the professional adult film business that gets tested as regularly as we do. Um, most people don't get tested ever, if at all, you know, let alone to the amount that we do. We test every 14 days. Um, you know, it's extremely regulated and it gets more, um, we add more to the tests every year um, just to make it safer for everybody. So, you know, to be a part of that, is it makes you feel more comfortable too and working in a safe you know healthy environment health and safety is like a number one priority and to be able to educate people further on that topic is definitely a goal of mine um because people just do not have the facts they don't have any clue what really goes into this business um they don't even consider it a business either you know they don't think that we are practicing you know safe safe sex that we don't care about our health like and we also don't care about business or our brand or anything else that goes along with it and it's just completely untrue it if you want to be reckless and be stupid and you know not handle your brand well or you know you want to engage in problematic behaviors or you know substance abuse and all these other things you will not be successful in this business so there's a lot of misconceptions that people have about the industry but we are a highly regulated, highly competitive industry, and you have to put in a ton of work in order to make it a successful, lucrative business. I look at it from a stance too as well, and you said that beautifully and eloquently in your own right, Miss Montana. What I love about the fact is when you look at the adult entertainment industry, folks, <clears throat> I mean, it's 20 years now, and this gentleman is a scumbag, but we're not in the days of when we had Girls Gone Wild with Joe Francis, and we saw those exactly. and everything like that. You have to look at it from a stance, too, like, that's 20 years ago. That's the past. We're focusing more on the present and the immediate future, and the immediate future for what you want to do and inspire with the adult entertainment industry is a positive message mixed with positive testing and actually rules and regulations that go into what you want to do, the professionalism, the decorum, and everything that is subsided within the adult entertainment industry, and I I think that's what I love about interviewing talent like yourself and especially a lot of the LFC girls who have done some fetish content and entertainment sides of the adult spectrum. I think you have to really look at what it is and how we're going into it, like we mentioned earlier. But at the end of the day, man, like it's like stop hating in a way. It's kind of like stop hating, start participating in regards to enjoy it and look for it wasn't what it is. Look at it from the image, if you will. I mean, you look at Bob Ross, for God's sake, back in the day, the joy of painting. 30 minutes later, bada bing, bada boom, we got ourselves waterfalls and mountains of everything if you can look at something like bob ross looked at those god dog paintings man you're golden 100 percent. i love that that reference too <laughs> it's perfect it's true and like and if people you know weren't so fixated on judging other people or you know inflicting their own beliefs onto others and trying to work out their own personal issues onto other people and through other people and be so angry and in shame and inflicting shame on everybody too it's like if we 
just were tolerant and loved things that we all love to do and we're embracing and accepting of other people, even if they're not like us, then so the world really would be such a better place. Like, yeah, let's be real. Like at the end of the day, like we're, we're all sexual beings. We all love sex. Like, and the, the best part about it is if sex wasn't such, you know, a lucrative business, then it wouldn't exist. And the fact that there's as many people that consume porn, but then you have the vocal opponents of it, the numbers don't add up. So there's a lot of people that are publicly stating, you know, in opposition of the adult industry and of sex work and, and pornography and everything else. So like those are the people who are mass consuming it. There's a reason why it exists. And it's not just because 50% of the population is consuming it. It's a, a very large number. So again, the numbers don't add up. So if people would just you know, embrace it, embrace your sexuality. And we, you know, in order to do that, we have to have more open conversations about it to eliminate that stigma and that shame that's attached to it and enforce education and tolerance and, you know, educating people on just healthy sex practices, even if it's not, you know, related to pornography or consumption. It's having those conversations about how to you know, have a healthy relationship, have healthy sexual relationships with partners. Um, even like, it's always shocking to me sometimes to talk to people that they don't even know how to communicate with their partner about sex. They wouldn't even dream of, you know, telling their partner what they wanted in the bedroom. And it's, it's like, we're still there in a lot of ways. You know, we've moved forward with so many wonderful achievements but at the end of the day like if you boil down to it like people are still like afraid to have conversations around sex they are and so it's like how do we how do we change that how do we shift the focus and try to turn it into like uh, something that is is a normal healthy thing like you know even like masturbation simple as that like it's okay to have a healthy sexual relationship with yourself you should i encourage it you know exploration is a wonderful thing like especially to have um you know healthy relationship with your own body and then to be able to share that with someone else in a healthy and safe way you know and if you have these conversations you're able to have just wonderful relationships that aren't full of shame or, you know, or having any negative feelings towards your body and even just sex in general. Like it, there's nothing negative that comes from having like healthy sexual relationships. So, and if people could see that and embrace it, then it would be a wonderful thing. I oh, know. I agree with you. And I would tell the story a lot within my shows. Like I remember as a young man, so I'm going to be 32 in April. So this is probably, oh, thank you. Now I'm thinking this is probably back in 2010. So I was 18 going on 19 at the time. Right. So I remember I used to work in a market research firm or one of my coworkers, you know, we, we connected, if you will, you know, we had a little bit of a thing for a few months. And at the time I was 19 no, and I always use this, like I was 19 and at the time, the girl was probably about 25, 26. And I mean, at this particular time, you have connection and foundation that I always spread to everybody. You know, if you find that right person, now mind you, even if it's for a few months or something, you see where it goes and you see where it flows, so to speak. And you talk sure. about it relationships i've always said this people like the girl that i was with now mind you i don't care if you're who, what size you are what have you if you're interested in me if we connect we're cool i don't care if you're a big girl i don't care what size you are if we can connect on a spiritual level or what have you kind of level and it's all in here and in here that's wonderful that's golden and i've always said this like guys would look at me like oh come on man why are you doing this why are you with her i'm like well i like it i don't care if she's a big girl what have you if we can connect on a level it doesn't matter because we looked at, especially in modeling, especially at the women that we have here, you can have curves, the word spins, the verb, like it's black street, no diggity up in here all day long, whatever have you, there's something for everybody. And I think if you have that something, there's a variety, man. And I've always said that to people who, what you did, who, whoever you fall in love with or whoever you're into from a relationship status, it could be a fling, cherish that moment because it's moments and memories created yet with moments and memories yet to be created. You have to look at it from that stance and not be judgmental and just vibe with it. That's like life in itself. Vibe with it. Let it flow. It's true. Like the, the problem that we have too is that, you know, everybody, especially in like Western society is so superficial and people cannot get over it. like every time they see it, the perfect example like of a current one is 
um, there's an artist named Jelly Roll. He's a country singer, rapper, and his girlfriend, her name is Bunny, and she is like, she's a former sex worker, stunning blonde bombshell. She looks like a playmate. And he's very heavy, heavy, heavy set guy. And people just troll them all the time, like, you know, sh- shaming their relationship and saying, like, she's a gold digger or, you know, like, why is she with someone like him? Um, because he's gross to them. And it's like, people have this weird block that it's like an inability to understand that people can like love each other on levels beyond just like a superficial like physical one that you tend to think is your idea of perfection too like you know people are into a lot of different things too like just because somebody like is heavier or you know is shorter or has this and that and the other isn't necessarily like your preferred like aesthetic it doesn't mean that other people don't find that attractive either and you know but a lot of the time it's like every time people like project these like negative feelings towards other people it's coming from a place of their own insecurity and their own jealousy or you know they're lashing out because they don't have the ability to be confident within themselves or you know, they're not in happy relationships. So I always tell people, it's like, you know, people can be very cruel and you have to dissect it and like really understand like the people that are saying these things are, they're hurt. There's a reason why they're saying these things. It's coming from somewhere. So I always tell people like as much hate as you get, like instead of just throwing it back and contributing and like putting more hatred and anger and volatility out into the world, it's like just throw some love, kill them with kindness, wish them the best and you don't have to engage with it. And then you just move on and, and fill your life with positivity. It's really easy to get sucked into this whirlwind of like, especially on social media, like everything is, you know, is misery and, um, and hatred and just hostility constantly. And it's easy to get sucked into that. Um, but if you separate yourself from it and like you're at peace with yourself and you have you're confident and have good people around you like you have to take care of your mental health so to surround yourself with loving positive people and to live your life that way it gives you a peace that no one can take away from you when you are confident in yourself and you feel fulfilled in your life and your relationships and everything else like you get happiness and you have peace and no one else can take that away from you and Mm -hmm. i just wish that for them as well Oh, agreed. And I mean, I've also always equated to the LFC brand. I mean, like we talk about it not being something for everybody. And I will, I will always say this. I think when it comes to LFC, there's a lot of peace of mind to it as well, because you're doing what you love. And it's also kind of like the D gaff style of don't give a fuck or dilly gaff, if you will. Yeah. Way, give a fuck. Yeah. You have to have that mentality with it. You because, do. Because with anything that you do in life, people are going to say some shit. They're going to start 100%. some shit. 100%. I've always said this, like I was raised Catholic and people can be like, okay, you do so LFC. Yeah, <laughs> and people do LFC or people do adult entertainment. It's like, Mike, how, and my family members have asked like, Mike, how can you do that? And I'm like, first of all, it's a job, number one. And number two, I choose to do it because I'm good at what I do. I can articulate and I can ascertain the message that we're trying to get out there. And number three, when it comes to friggin' social media, how many times do we see this with everybody going on about their political views and then, hey, we oh, got God. a sexy lady right here. So that's the positivity side of what we can bring to social media, that positivity saturation, if you will, from the I media. love it. Yeah, yeah, there's no political affiliation whatsoever. Yeah. Like, that's it. And, I, like, especially in these days, too, you know, I feel like social media just, like, enhances those, like, negative feelings that people have and gives them the outlet to just be completely shamelessly, like, volatile to to each other and spread this toxicity in the world and a lot of times it is like you know politically driven but it's like and that's the thing too like sex and like this with you know lfc it's like this is something fun and positive it makes you feel good and it's like a joyful time and thing to do you know so it's like we we'll just take a break and unplug from social media and go out into the real world and meet other people that just want to have fun and like and enjoy life enjoy yourself life is short it should be full of like love and happiness and experience so and this is one of them. it's all of those things it's a wonderful experience 
Now, Misha, if you don't mind, I had to pull this up because, folks, there's always great quotes. There's great tweets when it comes to Twitter, which I refuse to call it X. But when it comes to Twitter, (laughs) yes, when it comes to Twitter, I got to say this. I'd like to read this post that this lovely young lady over here did her thing with earlier today. Man, I got to just read this for the people because it's very poignant. Thank you. And here we go. It's been so nice unplugging from the toxic bubble that is Twitter, and I mean bubble. If you feel overwhelmed by nothing but constant anger, hatred, stupidity, illogical, baseless nonsense from this app, just remember there is a real world where most people live still, and they don't even remotely care what's happening on here. Most society isn't on this app. Most of society is still inherently good and focused on their families, their homes, and their happiness. This app is strictly for people that don't get enough sunlight to air out their grievances based on their emotions and not on actual facts. There's a reason why people take to Twitter. They get valid validation that they never would in the real world. It feels hostility, reinforces fragile egos, and enables emotionally driven stupidity and ignorance over facts, logic, and reason. There's a world full of real people like that of legitimate concerns and aren't manipulating the masses for likes at the detriment of integrity and logical thought processing. There are people outside this bubble that are working out their traumas and dealing with their difficulties in a healthy and appropriate fashion and not projecting their pains onto others anonymously and from behind a keyboard. So smile and unplug. The world is doing just fine. And here's your reminder. Not everyone is walking around full of piss and vinegar not everyone hates you or is judging you go out and talk to a stranger today remind yourself what it means to be human you'll be pleasantly surprised boo yow thank you you're very (laughs) welcome but no as soon as you posted that i'm like we're gonna be talking about this on the podcast because i thought that was beautifully and eloquently written thank you when you know it's a big thing i try to drive it home just even to remind myself like especially you know, in my position and others in the position that I'm in, like, I mean, but anyone can relate to this. Like, for me, I think, and, you know, again, people in my position, it's more magnified, or it feels more magnified a lot of times, because we put larger targets on ourselves, um, whether we want to or not. (laughs) And, um, you know, it does, it feels like overwhelming, but it's like that for everyone, like going on Twitter is like, I never see posts, I rarely see posts that are positive, that are happy, that someone's like, you know what, I had a really good day today and I made someone else's day good also. You know, it's just, they just spew every grievance that they have, you know, what's wrong with the world, what's wrong with their life, like nothing is positive, nothing is good, it's always just negative. And then, because then it gives people that outlet and then other people that have the same issues or have other issues, but they just are dying to, you know, to, to get it off their chest, they link up and it just creates this just ball of anger and hatred. And it's so unhealthy, just even if you're not involved in it, just to watch it and consume it and digest it nonstop. It's like, it's so unhealthy to be plugged in to these social media outlets where you get sucked in and it, it's a bubble. Like I literally, I read negative, you know, comments and negative posts and just awful things online all day long. And then you unplug from it from a week or like go to other, like I went to YouTube or like even just going out and talking to people. The majority of the world is not on Twitter. First of all, Twitter is the most vile of all of them. But then, you know, you go into the real world. It's like, wow, it's refreshing that there are actually real people out here that are not, intentionally driving, you know, any kind of a narrative or, um, you know, trying to, to work out their childhood traumas by like hurting other people anonymously, like five followers with like a Roman Reigns, you know, avatar. And it's like the fake profiles have like the most to say. (laughs) It's, It's, you know, it's crazy to me. And the thing is, here's like, if you wouldn't have to make a fake profile to say all the vile things you say, if you were actually proud of them, you know, it's a, the whole thing is just, it's so toxic. It's so negative. It's so damaging, especially to the younger kids and our youth and teens. And, you know, it's not a healthy practice to be on social media 24 seven. If I didn't have to be on t- social media, I wouldn't be on it at all. You know, in, in my honest opinion, I don't want my kids on it. I, you know, my parents aren't on it, which is great. Like, they're very happy, peaceful people. And there's a reason why, like most people, are, the happiest people are definitely not plugged into to the social media outlets. But unfortunately, our businesses have become damn near dependent on those kind of platforms. So it's an, it's a necessary evil that we have to, to deal with. But I think, you know, it's good to remind people that, you know, there is a real world out there. And like, it seems like everything is so magnified and horrible. And it's just like, 
doom and gloom all the time and people are just hostile and angry and vicious like you know cruel relentless for no reason you know completely unsolicited but it's like it's okay like if you take a deep breath and go outside like there is a world that's working outside of the walls of of social media and it's a beautiful world and people treat each other well and it's not as bad as it it seems on on twitter for sure there's an R&B artist by the name of Calvin Richardson who had a song called Hearsay, Don't Care What They Say, I'm Gonna Love You Forever and Always. Like, it's one of the stuff, like, when it comes to people and everything in general, you have to look at it from that stance, and I'm with you. I will say this. When it comes to social media, like, I got it, like, Facebook, like, in 2010, so I was a late bloomer, if you will. I remember there was a girl who I'm still friends with to this day who we went to high, I went to high school with. She graduated, like, a year or two after me, and I remember she wanted a friend to request me on Facebook, and I said this following sentence, I'm not on Facebook, and then they look at you like, why are you right. not? Like, I don't want to. Like, here's the thing. I when I want to be. When I was a kid, like, when my dad and I used to go to Dave and Buster's all the time. And I used to love going to Dave and Buster's and just shooting hoops and the motorcycles and stuff. Yes. And I used to have a sh- hoops in the backyard. Like, I just, like, used to, like, shoot hoops just doing that, just going in the backyard. And then, hey, when it's dinner time, let's go back and let's have some grub. That's the thing, too. We are so accustomed to the world. And I know people can say video games and stuff. But, hell, that's even healthier than going on to dog on social media. It is. And, it is. again, we look at it from an age standpoint. Like, we're talking about as we get older and we get wiser. We're like... First of all, do the likes really matter? Do reposts really matter? At the end of the day, you can catch your hands on only one hand here to see who your true friends are and the true people that you surround yourself with. And I think we get lost in the translation of social media, especially with avenues like TikTok, with Facebook, with Twitter and Instagram, and the whole kit and caboodle, if you will. But at the sure. same time, man, you have to get that mentality of going out there and just like, man, you need to take a break from this because it can cause sickness. And no, I'm not talking about down with the sickness like disturbed. Okay, I wish. Yes, right? Exactly. That but would be a good thing. That would be a good thing. But no, this the sickness of just like, you, you have to tune out every once in a while and really just explore. You do. Well, it's poison. It really is. Like, it's poison for your for your mind, which then, you know, affects. And I've noticed, like, it can affect you in ways that, like, you're not even aware of. You know, subconsciously it does. Like, if you're absorbing nothing but negativity and just, and the, it's vile. You know, if you get into the, the darker parts of it it's like i mean some of the stuff these people have the audacity to say and that's another thing you know they think that one social media made the mistake of giving people and i'm sorry to say like not everybody needs a platform to speak their mind they don't you don't like uh, there's no reason for, for you guys to have like these outrageous opinions but then you know it's validated by people that are like minded that also feel like they're inferior in a lot of ways and this is their moment that's why they plug in so tough to it and then they start getting validations you know the more vile it is the more likes it gets the more controversial it is you know the meaner it is um it gets reshared it gets reposted it's just vomited all over the internet and then people like it because they're their anger that they have inside themselves they're connecting it to someone else's and they're relating to it and they feel some sense of you know, this camaraderie and like, it's comforting to them in a lot of, in an odd way, you know? And it's sad because like, they're not getting any validation beyond the computer, beyond social media, beyond strangers. Um, They need that validation. And that's what like our society is sick. Like if we can't be validated as human beings for our feelings outside of social media, we have to take to a social media platform for the superficial world of this, like getting constant likes. Like you said, like friends, most people, the older you get, you can count your friends on one hand. In social media, you have this false warped reality of, you know, I have all these friends, I have all these followers, I have all this attention, people want to hear what I have to say. And you know, so you an ego starts being created from all of this stuff too. And it's damaging because it's a fantasy world. You know, the personas that exist online, it's nothing like someone is in real life. And I guarantee you that because I tell you, like if people talk the way they did on Twitter in person, like you would get your ass beat as you should, you know? And that's what people forget too. Like, you know, they're comfortable tiptoeing, if not full blown going into full, you know, slander and defamatory (laughs) comments all the time from a legal standpoint, let alone just a vile one. I mean, it's like your people are on there, you know, threatening 
and they were saying it's under the umbrella of free speech it's like you forget like there there is a real world beyond this like there's a real world where like consequences still apply and that's what people don't understand like we used to have integrity in journalism um you used to look to to journalists and to news sources that were credible for your information we can no longer do that you know now it's like these journal they're not even journalists they they just like you know look at somebody's social media post and then they report it and then they speculate and they drive narratives based on bias and their feelings and you know they it's clickbait and people don't understand that they're these feelings that they have are being used against them for profit, you know, for sensationalism, for likes, like the more outrageous and sensationalized something is, the more likes it gets, the more shares it gets. Like, and it's just this vicious cycle that we've all been forced to be a part of. And it's easy to get sucked into it and think that this is the norm. This is how we should behave. This is how we should, you know, consume our information or you know information lack thereof and we've lost the ability to think critically you know to think thoughtfully before we speak everything's emotionally driven you know we don't think about what we're saying we don't think about what we're typing um we don't think that there are consequences you think that you can say things anonymously you you act with um this narcissistic kind of a um an ego when you when you talk because you have a few followers on social media it's like none of this is real like this is a superficial world but it's it the consequences are real the damage is real um and the pain and suffering and everything that is uh, is getting absorbed from it is is real so you know and the, there is a world beyond it that exists where none of this matters and none of this applies so that's what like, i really think you know i i try to encourage people it's like with all this negativity like let's try to pump some positivity into the world for a change it needs it badly oh exactly and, and i equated to and misha i've seen a lot of stuff that's been on the internet about yourself and your partner but i'm like for me it's like i look at you and got to know you and speak to you this form and i treat you with the respect and professionalism that i would with all my guests i'm like at the oh, end of the day you're welcome. Who cares? At the end of the day, what I mean by that is like it's y'all relationship. Right. If y'all are happy. Fucking let it be. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Always, and that's where I've always stirred from from doing podcasting and wrestling stuff. I'm like, I'm not gonna talk about who's dating who because at the end of the day, who the fuck cares? Like if they're exactly. happy, that's the that's, main thing. It's crazy when people like they insert themselves into your life so heavily and like you know, and they make all these um these finalizations like about about you and like the assumptions and they think they have it completely figured out based on what i have no idea but again that goes back to like people don't think critically anymore or with logic or any kind of you know um thoughtfulness because they don't have to you know they're reading headlines that have no nothing informative attached to it like no sources nothing you know it's just literally anyone can write about anything and the problem is that everybody believes it and then they turn it into fact so um it's a frustrating thing to have to deal go up against like but at the same time you know i've learned i mean one i've been always been very thick-skinned especially with my profession like this is nothing new to me but you know it's just it's frustrating to watch people that you like love and care about have to deal with this madness constantly and it isn't i look at it and i'm like this is just so ridiculous that like i can't believe people even believe this and that's the frustrating part too is like you want to just like be like you guys are all so stupid you have no idea because they don't they have no idea what you know what's really going and you just want to shake people and it's like, but you have to take a deep breath and like walk away at some point because, and again, they said, who the fuck cares? It doesn't even matter. Um, and the fact that people are so like interested in our lives, it's like, you should be interested in your own life. <laughs> like what's going on with you and, uh, you know, get a hobby. There's other things you could be doing than be interested in what we're doing. But, you know, and again, that's like, I always want to try to lead my life by example you know, for, for myself, for others, for my children, and, you know, be the best version of myself that I can be. And I tell you that my, 
the way I am and the way I've formulated my thoughts and opinions has literally nothing to do with anyone else's opinion of me. It never has and it never will. Um, and again, like, kind of like we talked about earlier, like someone's always going to say something about you. Like I've learned over the years too, if you change something, you're like, oh, well, I don't want people to not like me because of that. You go out of your way to change something about yourself they will find something else. You're ne- or then another group of you know people are now no longer satisfied. You're never going to please everyone. All you can do is be the best person that you can be, and you know, and it does bring you a sense of like happiness and peace when you are truly yourself and you you know you love yourself and you put that positivity back into the world. Like it's calming. It's peaceful. There you don't allow the chaos and uh, you know all of this ridiculousness to to penetrate your your life and your circle because you know other people's misery and their anger and their hatred and fear and everything else they can keep that like everything is good over here and i'm happy and our lives are wonderful and we're very blessed and i want to share that with the world and if i can do that the more people you know we meet like the more they can see that and experience it and that's a beautiful experience and a beautiful part of life and i want to focus on those parts and not people that are just you know miserable with themselves and choose to inflict that misery onto others for no reason and i'll equate this and it's very apparent and operative of what you just said there with being thick skin i think if you're in the entertainment industry and much like matt with what he has done in his professional wrestling career and mostly his mma career as well i look at it from a stance too when i watch that dude you could tell the subtleties the intricacies and nuances and how he wants to tell his story and just the gravitational pull that he has with numerous amounts of audiences and the masses that he brings in i look at it from a stance with him like he's doing great work now outside the wwe auspices he just did a great match with jacob fat too he's got a match with rvd coming up hiroshi tanahashi with new japan he's making waves outside the wwe auspices i mean it's great to have the big companies like you look at wwe aew now tna is back to being total non-stop action yeah. wrestling but then there's mlw there's new japan there's so many different outlets that we could see so many of these great superstars and i think he's really hit his stride with the almost sincerity and respect of just being that authentic person that he is and really staying true blue and just going his own way and finding his path yeah and, and thank you for saying that too i agree with you completely i you know it it was hard to watch at some point like i mean obviously you try to reach this level in your career, you know, what's the biggest place that I can work that where I can elevate my success to the highest level. And, you know, the, for WWE is obviously the biggest you can do, but at the same time, like with him, you know, and, and he's an incredibly talented athlete and a wonderful person and an amazing entertainer, so charming and charismatic and just immensely talented in so many ways. And he has been for years, he's been, you know, with the UFC and then with the wrestling. But when he wasn't like allowed to be himself in a sense, though, too, you know, it's like constantly walking on eggshells. And, um, you know, he's a, achieved a high level of success. He's achieved the highest level of success. And that success isn't stopping. People think that, you know, it's just because it's, it's changed. It's, you know, it's kind of uh, transforming into something else. Like, he is on a tear right now. Like he's busier and, and happier. That's important too. You know, it's like for him to be, to be happy and doing what he loves. He loves what he does. He loves the fans. He loves traveling and, and doing this. Like he's made for this life and it shows, you know, he's put the work in, you know, and anybody that says that he hasn't, that's absolutely completely false. Like, and there's a reason like 1% of, you know, people make it in anything it's because the drive and their determination and the hard work that they put into it nothing has ever been handed to him he has worked so hard harder than anyone i've ever seen in my life to get to where he is and he deserves every minute of it and he's just having a wonder he's so excited about japan and all these opportunities and like you know it's great he's doing the signings and meeting people and you know, to feel the love and support of the community and his fans. And it, it's wonderful. Like he's doing big things and it's just the beginning. Like we just started the year and there's a lot more coming that like nobody even knows that's, uh, that's on, you know, the horizon here. So I'm really excited to get to be part of this journey with him and to watch him grow into himself and, and to be himself authentically and, 
you know, unrestrained is my favorite version of him. And, um, you know, I think people really enjoy that about him too. So he's authentic and hardworking and just a wonderful, wonderful person. And he deserves every, everything that he has and, and will get even more of going forward here. But it's going to be exciting to see because, you know, I call it, it's like the redemption tour that he's on now because, um, you know, he doesn't quit. Like this isn't, this isn't not an end for him at all. It's literally just the beginning and there's so much coming. It's just going to blow everybody's minds and it's going to be different. Like even like we're doing strip club appearances, we're doing leaning a little into adult stuff. Um, obviously like he wants to fulfill everything that he can in, in wrestling and in professional, um, God, I just totally forgot even what it was. Wrestling and mixed martial arts, <laughs> a combat sports, the, the brain, my brain, um, you know, in any avenue with that, like from that professional sector of the world. So, um, but he's living his life and loving every second of it and getting opportunities that he wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And we um, were shooting a reality show right now and doing a bunch of fun stuff. So like, there's a lot coming that, and I can't wait for people to really get to see another side of him that they've never seen before. I think with that dude, I mean, he could be serious. He could just run around on a, scooter, oh, yeah. on a scooter and just entertain and make everybody laugh. And I mean, from the Japan side of things, man, you think of the history of New Japan Pro Wrestling and the many legends that have come there. And I mean, with Hiroshi Tanahashi, now as the president who Matt has targeted with, it, we're going to mm -hmm. see some great stuff there. I, I think what's great about that is adding the strong style element. Also, when you go to Japan, or you go to Mexico, or you go internationally, you're picking up more styles, you're learning, you're constantly absorbing and adapting to your surroundings so to speak and i've always loved that from the discipline and just the culture side of things because culture being culturally in tune if you will not only is that wonderful but it's the best way of being as i say the best representation of your presentation so to speak so if you can represent yourself and present yourself in many different facets again you're not only golden but i think it just shows the mark that you're showcasing as a person your overall foundation and i think with what he's doing and like you mentioned opening up like doing appearances at strip clubs and stuff and the adult side of things that also goes in hand, too, from the business side of things, because the merch he can sell, the autographs and everything. It's a community. At the end of the day, what we're all doing is it's a community, and the interaction is what makes it important and what makes it drive everybody. Truly. Well, and then even them, it's like it's authenticity, too, you know, with him. It's like this is what who he is. This is what he wants to do. This is what makes him happy. Like, he loves this. Like, everything he does, he wants to do it, you know. And it's cool to get to see that unrestrained, like, side of him, too and very multifaceted and the thing is too is like every version is authentic too like where you know he's a goofball stoner like that's a part of him for sure and then you have like he's a serious like fighter and um you know he's a black belt in jujitsu and has this whole side of him too so it's really cool to get to see like what he's gonna do with he's got some great ideas and there's a lot of stuff moving forward that he's gonna see you know, a side of him that is going to be entertaining in a different way that I think people have been used to seeing for the last couple of years, like, and maybe revisiting some of the more original roots of his, of his personality. So, and he's incredibly talented, you know, with mixed martial arts too. So um, getting to be able to showcase his abilities too, because in a lot of ways, you know, it felt like as even a consumer that he was, stifled in WWE because he wasn't getting the opportunity to really show that badass fighter side of himself that um that he has and so it's going to be really cool to see what he's going to do and like sit with Japan and like culturally and you know in Japan like in Mexico they love him and um you know and he does I've been watching his matches too like he's bringing out the heat in ways that he hasn't been able to for a while so it's just the beginning. It's warming up and it's going to be great. So I'm really excited to see, you know, what he does and where he goes with everything. And I think a lot of people are too. So it's a fun journey to be on. And you make me laugh when you say goofball stoner, because I've always said this. We'll throw some pop culture into this, Miss Misha Montana. It's like, first of all, who doesn't love Spicoli from Fast Times at Richmond High? You were, <laughs> you were drawn. 
Exactly. <laughs> drawn to that character because not only is it an iconic movie with, you know, just everybody that is that all-star cast. And I say this, whoever has not seen Fast Times or Rage My High, go out of your way because it's freaking hilarious. That's great. Yeah. But that character is so iconic and you can base some stuff True. on different, you know, characters and stuff. That's what we see a lot in wrestling and everything. If you can just take your own twist on a certain character and really add it to yourself and amp yourself up to the volume, that's what you do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, it's great. And like, and that's the thing. It's like, he's a true entertainer through and through. Um, and it's amazing. Like, and like I said, it's, that's his personality. It's not an act. <laughs> you know, people are surprised. They're like, I didn't know he actually like talked like that. I thought that was like something that was faked, you know, like that's how he talks all the time, whether he's serious or, or goofy or not. It's, um, that's him. So, and that's like a beautiful thing about him too, is that he really is like himself all the time. Like what you see is what you get with him. And it, it's refreshing and wonderful. Like, and everyone that meets him, you know, they all say the same thing too. Like he's an incredibly humble, wonderful person. And then on the other hand, he's just like immensely talented and just like, it, and he's way too humble for, for how talented he is. But it, that's what's beautiful about him though too. I've always said this, and I think with his stance, I've always said and noticing him, like you mentioned, just the way he talks, the way he walks. I think it's not cockiness, cockiness it's confidence, but at the it same is. time, humbling yourself. And like I said, put the little humblers out there, the words of wisdom, the pearls of wisdom. I remember True. actually hearing that first statement when I was in ninth grade. Mr. Marino always used to tell me about the pearls of wisdom. I think yeah. he that pearls of wisdom. You have a lot to offer, not just within yourself, but if you're sharing a locker room with a lot of younger talents on the rise and you have that advice to give, the knowledge that you have is really inept and it's it's all always it it's a tutoring thing. You have to learn and being you around do. the locker room, like he has that ability to just do that as well. So there's many different layers to this. There are there are like and it, like I said, it's really kind of an exciting time because you know it could be scary for a lot of people too. You know, you're going into an unknown and major life changes and a lot of uncertainty potentially and um but for him it's like it's a challenge and it's exciting and he like embraces it and it actually like i think it you know it motivates him more too and he takes every challenge like head on and it's like it's amazing to watch him especially under pressure like he's definitely the type like he turns into a diamond under pressure for sure and it, it's so incredible to watch like there are not many people, you know, even like professional athletes or celebrities or anyone to that caliber that operate, you know, the way he does. Like, it's such an impressive, beautiful thing to watch. Like, and I'm excited for people to get to see like different sides of him too, that, you know, beyond the, the bullshit headlines and the, you know, internet stupidity that they've decided to, to make him, a certain way and it's like it's it's so exciting that we have the opportunity to share all these other sides that people don't get the opportunity to see i think as well and i'll equate this to you as we transition to what misha montana is doing i mean matt riddle and you both as a collective unit also are just absolutely killing it both together and respectively <laughs> yeah. you're both very talented and amazing people but you Thank matt you. You're very welcome. I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff like you've done with like women. Like there's Evelyn Inc. out there who's another tattooed babe. Everything that you transform and transmortify, and I'll say what I do adore about your work is the constant professionalism. You could tell you're having fun and you love what you do. And what I think a lot of people get attracted to by a woman like yourself is it's the external beauty and the internal beauty, but also that edge you have. I mean, you're an inked babe. If you look at ink, if you look at ink magazine, you look at the magazines that we would see at our local convenience stores, there's something attractive by that imagery and what is portrayed on camera and i think what a lot of people like about that is again it's something that really hems the body that is the temple and i think what you transform and you transmogrify but into your work on screen says a lot about you as a foundation and your overall woman so i gotta say a lot of what you do in front of the camera you do provide a lot of great quality content i suggest a lot of people check out misha's films if you've not already oh thank you i appreciate that that means a lot to me i i enjoy it i always i've always liked you know entertaining and um I really enjoy being an adult entertainer. I always have. Um, I love directing. I love being in front of the camera. And it, it's definitely a passion of mine that I've had for a long time. And I've been able to to do it with, you know, a, a little bit of success here and there. So I'm, you know, very grateful for that and all the opportunities that I have. And, you know, I've been able to build a brand and, 
and a business with with this work and I'm just so grateful for all the experiences and opportunities and um and it's fun for me like and I and I love adult you know I've been involved in some really wonderful projects I have some great projects of my own that I'm getting back into I'm going to revamp this year and come up with some new cool stuff and you know it's a great creative outlet outlet for me too so I'm excited to get back to work too because I have you know I just had a baby so that kind of put my my adult performing on the back burner a little bit but I'm excited you know to get back into it and um, last year I won an award for a movie I directed and um, and starred in too so I was really proud of that achievement and you know, it's just the beginning, like all these things are really exciting. And I you know I'm so happy that the adult world embraced me and I'm able to share these crazy ideas with people and they ran with it. And, you know, here we are. And it's, it's a really fun experience and journey to, to be an adult too. Like I absolutely love it. First of all, congratulations on the baby as well, ma'am. I will Thank you. You're very welcome. But I always put it like this. What I admire about you too is, and I think a lot of people can say this, what I've always admired about the adult entertainment industry as a whole is the body confidence, number one, but also the confidence of the extent of, I mean, a lot of people are very like shy, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to being on camera. And I mean, sure. totally understandable. But I look at it from a stance too as well. You're putting yourself out there, not only for the sensuality side of things, but we talk about entertaining. You want to entertain the people within your content. You want to put out quality quality content. And that's what a lot of people, like we talk about, certain people don't see that element of the adult entertainment industry. I mean, you see the glitz and the glamour and the pageantry with all these awards from the AVNs, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, man, you you don't know what that sweet, sweet fantasy, to quote Mariah Carey and ODB, me and Mariah go back like House of Fire. That stuff that really is that elaboration, so to speak. It's like, for God's sake, I'll put it out like this. When TRL Total Request Live, yes, I'm going back to 99 with this. I love it. Go there. <laughs> when you were watching Carson Daly and all these acts like in sync from the boy band side of things, or you would see Corn, or you would see Limp Biscuit blowing up the dog on ship when after they're singing Nookie, you would see these beautiful women just come out of the bikinis and everything. They're looking luxurious. They're looking fine as wine, if you will. Stuff yeah. like that is the fantasy that a lot of men like, that a lot of women like, and it's something that is rewarding at the same time. It's almost like a body worship, if you will. I agree with you 100%. And I love the 90s references because I am a 90s girl myself. Um, but then there's something just, it's intoxicating and enchanting about those powerful, like female sex figures. I wanted to be one of the, like, the playmates or like any, like Jenna Jameson, the like, porn stars since I was very young, you know, and it wasn't just because of the sex element. It's like, it's because of the, the power and like they're, you know, sex figures, they're so stunning, but their presence is different than like a model on like Vogue to me. It's like, you see the, there's like something that's just raw and gritty and it just it like exudes just energy and just fierceness that um, I love that about the all these women especially in an adult you know and like on the different magazine covers and um and in in porn and everything else like the these beautiful talented entertainers but then they're just like there's something so fierce about them and you know you command presence and um it's a it's a really cool role to be in it's something that you know i've always wanted to be i always wanted to be a, a sex figure and um i'm so thrilled that i get to like live that dream out because like to be able to to have be in that position is truly like it's such an incredible feeling and just to be empowered and then to share that too like and you know i mentor um younger girls getting into the industry and you know i'm a public speaker and advocate and educator to try to bring awareness to the adult industry, but also to educate people, you know, and, and to be truthful about it. Um, and I never sugarcoat things with people about adult, like, you know, there are a lot of difficulties and challenges that come with it. I'll always be, be honest about that. But, you know, for me, it's like the most rewarding career because it gave me a level too of, of self-confidence and, and empowerment and just even, you know, financial independence and um, in making my relationships stronger 
and and everything you know it there's a lot of benefits to it just for for personal reasons too like um never had a healthier relationship with with sex and and my outlook on um even my outlook on like monogamy or you know having to deal with like insecurities like within yourself and um it's really given me a, a wonderful perspective and outlook on that and i think you know for people even like like porn embraces people of all sizes shapes colors backgrounds you know it doesn't discriminate so i think if people leaned into that more too like there's something for everyone like you can fall into any category like you you're beautiful to someone in this market too like and it really is like it's, it's such like an, a confidence boost to be able to be you know to be a, a sex figure and um, and I love every minute of it, and I always have, and I just, and I'm humbly and gratefully like just accept and just revel in this this life and this experience all the time. I'm just so 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 grateful for it. I will add a '90s reference to that because you said something. In there. I know you'll appreciate this. And you mentioned names like Jenna Jameson. I also equate Pam Anderson with this. When you have yes. the Internet Babes of the Year, folks, because we used to have the Internet Babes of the Year, the most searched on the Internet were women yeah. like Jenna Jameson and a Pam Anderson. And I mean, yeah. WWE did that with Trish Stratus. Like in 03 and 04, she was the Babe of the Year. I mean, when you look at a woman like Trish Stratus, like she was a fitness model, she was a model. Yeah. Own right, and then she became this kick ass stratisfaction. Yeah, all the time. and she just came back and did her match with Becky Lynch, and she's in like her mid to late 40s. And I she's know she's great, it. right? God, she's such a babe. Exactly. Well, that's the thing, too. When WWE used to be like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I with the good old days remember those like you know, attitude era, and like there was like you know, tits and an ass all over like <laughs> WWE, um, back in the good old days. But no, I love it. And that's your, you're right. Like then that's these powerful female figures, especially they emerged really heavily in the nineties and shook shit up like Britney Spears and, you know, just iconic figures now legends that paved the way for, for us to even have more of, you know, uh, a population that is way more open to, to sex. And even just like, being provocative, how we dress, what we listen to, you know, embracing sexuality um, as females, like, you know, we've normalized even like I wrote, like down to what we wear, you know, all the time. I think that that expression um, has become way more tolerated too. And that's a huge thing from 20 years ago, you know, just from what we even wear every day. So if we're making changes in the right direction and these powerful female leading figures have paved the way for for everyone else and it's really it's an awesome thing this one bringing up britney spears over here i will say this my britney yeah, no i'm right there with you because that was my first crush britney spears when i, I was britney. growing up in the 90s me too and i'm gonna throw this out here you want to feel old here folks misha montana i don't even think you realize this but folks we have just celebrated the 25 year anniversary of baby one more time can you believe I that i saw oh. that the other day i was like oh my god i'm so old <laughs> uh, now, here's the thing about that. I use this as an example a lot when it comes to him. And I said, when Britney Spears' Baby One More Time first came out, you could talk about the scene where she's performing and the friggin' gymnasium and she's doing the dance. You could talk about her in the, like, the cafeteria area and the outer way of the school and the car and whatnot. But when she wore the doggone schoolgirl outfit, like the Catholic school type outfit with the mm -hmm. pink hair and whatnot, that has become such an iconic look. Iconic. And you yeah. can't deny iconic. it. You can't. You, do that. you can't deny no. it. She changed the game in so many ways. But that's, I love that. Just like unapologetic, revolutionary, just amazing, badass women. Like, it, it's wonderful. Which is great, too. That we get to celebrate it with, you know, LFC. Like, I'm so excited to be a part of that. And we are excited to have you. And you sp you mentioned Thank badassery. You. You're very welcome. You mentioned badassery, if you will. Kick-ass, badass, the whole nine, however you want to define it, ma'am. You, my friend, are a badass and a kick-ass person in your own right. You're welcome. You are a stroke survivor. And I'm going to say this right now, folks. This kind of hits close to home. My grandmother suffered a stroke back in 08, and she got through it. My mother suffered a mini stroke back in 2015, 2016 time period. And Amisha, I got to put this on you and say, first and foremost, I know you are a stroke survivor. We are all happy to see you well, healthy and well doing your thing. And the fact that you're here with us, I got to say, it's wonderful that you got through that. 
Thank you. And I'm very, very happy to be here sitting with everyone to be able to share that experience because uh, a lot of people are not as lucky. And, you know, I'm so sorry to hear that it has affected your family also. Like my heart, I told you, just goes out to you and, and to them. Like, And it's common, unfortunately. Like, you know, I don't think I've talked to a single person that they don't know someone or they haven't themselves like had a stroke directly impact their life or their loved ones. Um, and it really is one of those things that, you know, I never knew how prevalent it was prior to having a stroke and, um, it's becoming more and more common, like people younger and younger are starting to have them more. Um, it's a really serious thing. And, you know, I never thought in a million years because I was so ignorant and uneducated to what even a stroke was, um, that I thought strokes were mainly reserved for, for older people to have. And that's just not the case. So, you know, um, I'm so happy to be here. I had a stroke in 2021 after I had, um, the vaccine and I unfortunately developed a blood clot that traveled to my heart and I had a previously undiagnosed heart condition at the time uh, called a PFO. So it shot the clot into my brain and caused a stroke. And, you know, I lost all control of the right side of my body and mostly my face was paralyzed. It still has some um, semi paralysis to this day and my speech and um, having to like rewire and relearn things. And even to this day, you know, my memory is horrible, um, so horrible, just different things. Like it changes you permanently it, um, on levels that people aren't even aware of. So I'm really happy that, that, that I'm here and I get to, to share my experiences with people. One, to spread awareness and just to, um, to be able to talk about it and, and to provide some comfort to people that, that deal with it or for anyone that deals with things where they suffer silently um just to spread awareness even to the fact that we all have something going on that a lot of people you know aren't aware of so it's just so important to take care of your health and and your loved ones and um and to know the signs of having a stroke and educate yourselves on that because you know, a lot of times people think uh, people are having strokes that they're drunk or on drugs because they're um, not making any sense when they speak. And, um, you know, that's a dangerous and unfortunate uh, assumption to make because it can be deadly for people, too. So um, it, it's been a, a crazy journey coming back from the stroke. But, you know, the stroke gave gave me life in a lot of ways, because after that, I was able to to do a lot with my career that I wouldn't have been able to do. I have um, an, a, one of the most nominated um, documentary style showcases of an adult performer out there because of the stroke. And it's giving me a lot of opportunities like that I'm incredibly grateful for. And um, if I can share those experiences with others, then, you know, I hope it helps make a difference at some point too. I think you most definitely are with your documentarian style of oh, giving the platform. You. You're welcome to give the platform to tell your story as far as the stroke goes. And I've always said this. First of all, you talk about your grill in your face. You got a nice face. All up in here is Thank great. You. You're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I'm lucky it came back. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I, I've equated it because I've told my story and I equated this with strokes and what has gone on in my family. So I'll say this straight up right now. I'm an epileptic and I'm going to say this right now. Oh. From the seizure side of things, I always say this, because like you with looking up on strokes, I did more looking up when I first got diagnosed with it. I was 15, yeah. I was 15, 16. I got to say, folks, it's horrifying. Like the only it thing, that, the only thing I lastly remember was I woke up to my dad by he hit my his hand was right here he was telling me to squeeze his hand and so i squeezed like <laughs> and all of a you sudden couldn't. right and emts are around you and you're like oh, oh shit. So scary. It's it is but i've it's always scary. put it to like this like you talk about a blessing it's like you wake up every day and people just think when yeah. epilepsy it's flashing lights i'm like no much no. like strokes there's stress factors there's everything yeah. that into it you have to be careful and you also not just overall just watching yourself health wise and just in general but whatever you go through and i always put this and i'll get a little spiritual here i think god has a plan for all of us we all go through trials and tribulations but we all go on that journey you know what i'm saying and the right is worth taking that is life so we're here and that's wonderful yeah, i'm so glad that you're here and i'm so happy to hear that but then you and you have such like a beautiful outlook on life too and 
we don't allow those things that so easily could like jade you or make you you know a nasty person or resentful and um it's like we have one life and like and even to be to have like a taste of of death at that point or you know what it could be like you you feel your own mortality and uh it's really like it is a gift because like it have like this level of gratefulness for my life and you know i'm sure you feel the same way and a lot of people that experience these kind of events like we all kind of have a similar experience or like mindset afterwards too that i've noticed it's like this collective thought process is very different than than you know people that haven't and like not saying that i would want anyone to but um there's the community of like survivors has an interesting um outlook on life because again and that goes back to everything else it's like we have one life and we have a limited amount of breaths that we take and the time that we have what do you want to do with it how do you want to be remembered and um you know what's your impact going to be on the world and why not choose to make it a wonderful one a lively one one that's full of life and laughter and love and you know good health and memories and experiences and um and pleasures and everything else so and and to, then to share that in that energy with other people and um i really think that it's it's a wonderful thing so i'm happy like and you're doing wonderfully and and putting this stuff together and sharing that energy and love with everybody it's really it's wonderful so Thank you for everything that you do, too. Oh, you're very welcome. And that feeling is mutual and reciprocated back to you, my friend. And I mean, here's what you're welcome. I always look at it like this. So you talk about stuff with being mean and nasty and stuff like my mindset. A lot of that was back in the day. I think it's just because you're younger in your youth. And I'll say right now, sometimes where we were three years ago is not where we are now. I think we grow older, we get wiser. And I think from that standpoint, you look back and you assess the situation. It's OK. Like that stuff happened. How could I assess so that doesn't happen again? And right. I think that's what life is. And a really one big thing, folks, it's an assessment. You know what I'm saying? We're putting sure. the places together. It's a thing. It's chess. What's the yeah. ultimate checkmate? Where's the journey going to take us? The ultimate checkmate is love and success. It's future. It's planning forward and moving forward. That's the ultimate checkmate in life. If you really look at it from a chess point of view. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what, you know, we, we choose our moves wisely, you know, <laughs> and speaking of choosing moves over here, what I think you should choose your move to do, folks, and this is the ultimate checkmate, is LFC 39 Goddess Among Us on February 24th, hosted Absolutely. by Misha Montana. Go get yourself down to Secrets Hideaway Resort and Spa, yes. Kissimmee, Florida. Kissimmee, kiss me like it's sixpence and on the richer up in here. There's another 90s reference. Yes. But <laughs> but as we move forward and as we move on into this thing that we call life, I will say this, Misha Montana, you have been an absolutely wonderful guest, and I'd love to have you back on for a round two. After this whole thing thing happens at LC39, I'd be delighted to have you back. Thank you, Michael. I, I would absolutely love that, and I'm truly looking forward to this. And thank you so much again for having me, and what a delightful conversation. Such a pleasure. You are so welcome. Now, first and foremost, we mentioned social media earlier, and I read one of the beautiful and eloquent tweets by Misa Montana with everything Thank that goes on with Twitter. You're welcome. Tweets, not going to call it X. X going to give it to you. X going to give it to you. That's what the only X I know, goddammit. That's right. <laughs> but I digress. Uh, man, you are on the Twitter front, Instagram, TikTok. Where can we follow you on all forms of social media? Let us know. My Instagram and my Twitter are at the Misha Montana on um, on OnlyFans.com slash Misha Montana. My website's MishaMontana.com. Um, tune into YouTube soon. We'll be having a lot of exciting links that will be posted on Instagram and Twitter. Um, yeah. And other than that, like, you can see me at Secrets for LFC on February 24th. And I can't wait. Hell to the yes, folks. It's going to be an amazing event coming to you from Florida. Flow Rida, if you will. Yay. Oh, my goodness. We're going to drop it to the floor like it's Flow Rida, baby. And we're talking about oh, I can't wait. We're going to be up in the build. We're all up in the mix. Yes, um, we are. Yes. So with LFC, lfcfights.com, check it out where you can see this show on the VIP section along with Tommy Bell Art, Sketchy and Funny. LFC 39 and LFC 39 will be up in the mix. So for the VIPs out there, y'all get to see some two quality events that only LFC can do as only as we can do because, well, that's how we do. Duh. That's how we do. <laughs> this is how we do. 
<laughs> yeah, buddy. All right. So all fronts for Lingerie Fighting Championship. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Mike Larkin92, where you can see not only this face, but this lovely face over here, this grill on the LFC podcast and so many great quality <laughs> content with these shows. Get on, subscribe to that, and subscribe to the Lingerie Fighting Championship's YouTube channel as well. And as I always say with each and every show, life is an art form, and we are all applying our crafts. And Misha Montana, I include you in those sentiments. And do you have mm -hmm. any – you're welcome. Do you have any final words for the LFC universe, the LFC fans, the LFC faithful. Yeah, do you have any final words before we get to February 24th? Well, first of all, go get your tickets. It's going to be an amazing time. I can't wait. I'm so happy to be hosting. Hopefully the first of many to come. I'm super grateful and excited to be a part of this. And yeah, go get your tickets and we'll be seeing you soon. Thank you guys again for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been such a pleasure. And as always, as the title of this show, folks, it's not just the name of this show, but it is my overall mindset as I point to my dome piece, beauty, strength, and dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are. And Misha Montana, Amen. M squared, <laughs> I include you in those sentiments. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, my dear. I appreciate it. <laughs> Flexing. Flexing.